Hello, my friends. Jacob is here once again. What? So soon? How could I possibly have a mind-blowing offering for all of you? Could it be that I went to the gym again and said a prayer? And then everything, the floodgates open? And I realized that uh, all of the things that I was doing in my life, you know, all these little things that we do, oh my goodness, how they mean something so much bigger so much deeper, so kooka do, I gotta tell you. And I'm not just saying a couple of people shared with me. At Earth Day and on YouTube, they were recommending, you know, Earth Day on YouTube. And of course, it featured like every single animal that I've been talking about. The fox, the crane, the octopus, lots of weird things. This thing. A lot of weird stuff you're going to find went down April 22nd, 2022, and I'm not just talking to kooky Earth Day celebration. The Large Hadron Collider starting up again. That's big news. We're going to see what portals they open. The European Union passing a historic law to make sure everybody's talking right. This is actually a really big deal. But don't worry, a lot of people think Elon's going to save the day. He's the, uh, the big guy for free speech. Well, I guess we'll see as the show goes on. But here's another savior that people are putting a lot of faith in. Let's see what he says. All of that stuff stopped, Steve. It was very nice, okay? But then they made me a dictator instead. In other words, I don't know, which would you rather be, a dumb person or a dictator? I think, I don't know, perhaps a dictator would be better. I don't want to be a dumb person. No denying he's a smart guy, but I don't know if I want to be a dictator. Buckle up, the show's just getting started. And so we should pay attention to these things. But I don't pay attention that much. <laughs> I gotta be honest, I really don't. Sometimes I pay attention a little too much to the comment section. And I gotta tell you, a couple of you were very disappointed in me. And I apologize. I have to apologize because I made some jokes, you know, at the expense that Uranus is getting probed. Telling people that Uranus is getting probed, it bothered some people. They said it was childish. And you know what? Today, I stand corrected. And I am sorry. And I gotta tell you something. I shouldn't be doing things that detract from the seriousness of such things. You know... I promise I didn't press that trigger. Sometimes I do these things because you know what? I want you all to have a relationship with God. You know, I want you to know God. I want you to know his Christ. I don't want you to come to me and think that I get all the answers. So I do these things. But you know what? This is the way I am. I'm a goofy guy. I don't like to use bad words. So I, I, I don't think I use bad. I never use bad words. I, you know, I do. If, if you know me in person, I do. I say naughty words sometimes. I'm going to be 51 years old. So yeah, I'm not perfect, right? But on the, on the show here, of course, I mean, it's not like my first go-to thing. I don't like to say naughty words. So I'm, I apologize, but I gotta tell you something. I'm never gonna, I'm, I'm, I'm gonna make a pledge here. I don't, I shouldn't make a pledge. They say that you shouldn't swear unless you mean it, but I'm gonna, I'm gonna make a promise to you that I'm gonna do my best to not say Uranus anymore. I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna tell you that. You know why? because I had no idea of the importance of Uranus. Uranus, as they, uh, as they call it, the Sky Father. On the last program, we talked about this. It's my mug. It became the mug because I think it's funny. Not because of any deep, remarkable meaning behind it, but there is a huge meaning and it's gonna blow you all away. It's gonna blow you all away. I gotta tell you, are you ready? Are you ready? Because once again, you know, God does everything. God does everything. We don't know what he's doing, you know, but if we seek, we find. If we knock, the door is opened. So these things are revealed to us. On my last program, I did not do. This mission to Uranus is a, uh, is a big deal, huge deal, utmost importance, and why? Because I got an email from Lucinda again. I got like 50 emails from Lucinda again. I love you, Lucy. Thank you for sending me a million emails. I get a kick out of it. Because a lot of the times that what is being sent to me, 
the Lord will bring me to something and it'll it'll like it'll just it'll be highlighted I don't know if it's the Lord that highlights it but then when you look at this and it makes sense and then you realize holy macaroni and then you go down and you see this breadcrumb leads to this breadcrumb and then you got a nice matzo loaf and you're like wow ha maybe uh maybe God is leading this meatball that is me Do you know that this is actually a better translation for the word heaven? That's right, heaven. It's not the kingdom of heaven. It's the kingdom of Uranus. Like literally, that's the translation. That's the literal wor root word of heaven. It's translated as heaven in the scriptures. Kingdom of heaven, in heaven, the heavens, heaven, heaven, all over. The expanse that we know as heaven. The kingdom of heaven is within you. That word heaven, take a look at the literal definition of it. The literal meaning of it, the Strong's literal meaning of it, or the Thayer's literal meaning of it when you go to the inner linear Bible. It's Uranus. So now that just blew me away. That just blew me away. I've been studying scripture for many, many years. I've seen that. I've looked at it before. I never made the connection, even though that that's the name of that was literally translated into Uranus later by the Greeks, which in Greek mythology, uh, Uranus is a, uh, the Greek god that personifies the sky. In Roman mythology, he was like the god of gods, the biggest god. In Sumerian mythology, the top guy, Anu. Uranus is heaven. So when Jesus was saying, the kingdom of heaven is within you, he's saying, the kingdom of Uranus is within you. Take a look. But don't just take my word for it. Let's go to studylight.org. This is an inner linear search that I'm doing. You see here, you got the Greek and you got the, uh, the verses up here. Everywhere you see the word heaven, anywhere you see that word heaven, you see the word Uranus. Actually, let's see how that really is supposed to be pronounced. Because you know, I don't know how to pronounce stuff. Let's Uranus. see. Oh, Oranas. 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 I'm going to have to start saying Oranas. That's heaven. That's heaven. And that's the same name for Uranus. Oranas. Oranas. <laughs> I think that's the way. It's... Oh, God. I sound goofy right now but anywhere you see the word heaven you know your will be done on earth as it is in heaven your will be done on earth as it is in Oranas. Oranas. that's strange don't you think i'm literally holding heaven in my hand every time i drink from that mug Oranas. translated as heaven heavens heaven heaven heavens like over hundreds of times
could have been translated as Uranus. That planet is named by the same name that we get the name heaven from. That's mind blowing, but not as mind blowing as the fact that I just adopted a little kitty cat named Cosmo. So today we got a cat. Yes, daisies. I still love Daisy, don't worry. But we got a cat today. And hope you guys enjoyed the video. Subscribe, like, and share. And say hi to Cosmo. Hello, Dad. Hello. Hey, Cosmo. Cosmo's coming home. Cosmo, Cosmo, Cosmo. Cosmo, Cosmo, Cosmo. Cosmo, Cosmo, Cosmo. Hey, Cosmo. Hi. Let's see. Cosmo, does. Cosmo, first day. Hello, Noah. Hello, Shiloh. Okay, see you inside. All right, the big day is here. Cosmo's coming out for the first time. What are we gonna do? What? What? what tell us what we have set up over here. Uh, we have this uh, little tower, and uh, his bed, mm -hmm. kitty litter, food. Okay. And he's got this. He's gonna have Cosmo's this. Here. He's gonna have this oh, whole area. Okay, I'm gonna let him out. Let's see. Let's see what happens. Come on out. Oh, it came right out. Hi. Cosmo. But before I get into the little kitty cat named Cosmo, I gotta talk about some things. Because this is incredible. This is incredible to me. What are the odds? Evan, my cup really says heaven. So you should get yourself a, <laughs> you should get yourself a mug. Because this is really in heaven. Heaven. Heaven in the morning. Heaven in the afternoon. Heaven at night. Whenever you have your tea or your coffee or whatever you want to drink out of it, I'm not going to judge you. Uranus is the... Notice how I've stayed away, right? Stay away. It's so much fun to say it, but isn't that ironic, right? I didn't know this. If I knew this, if I knew this, I would have never made the jokes. I would have never done all that stuff. So for those people that were like saying you're too childish or you're too much of a goofball and you're like, you're, you're minimizing the effect that the Lord is having in your life. For those of you that's, I am, I apologize. I'm sorry. I didn't mean it. I didn't know any better. Father, forgive me. I knew not what I did. I didn't know that the word means heaven. That's just insane. But not as incredible as what you're about to find out about this little kitty cat that I just adopted. Ethan just shared a video on, um, this is, this is so huge. I know it sounds goofy, but the, tr the truth of the matter is those who seek find, those who knock the doors open for them. I'm at the gym, I'm working out, I'm still buzzing. I'm still buzzing on the fact that I have a mug that says heaven. Right? I have a mug that is named after, you know, the uh, the greatest god in the Sumerian mythology, the Sky Father in Greek mythology and Roman mythology and all this stuff. I got a mug that I put on there because I thought it was really naughty. Uranus, I because I like to say it's getting probed. It was funny to me. Just, I mean, I just put this video up just yesterday. I taped it two days ago, and here I am feeling like a, a gobba a gook, you know? I feel like such a gobba a gook, whatever that is. I told people, I said, oh, everybody's, they're calling it Uranus now, and I said, that's a Mandela effect, because when I was raised and I went to school, they called it the other thing. Don't you think it's strange that that name, which means heaven. We all thought that it meant something, you know, pretty gross, almost like it was a joke. A joke! I was making light of the kingdom of heaven, the kingdom of Uranus. That's bizarre to me. This is new to me too, okay? I've been studying scripture a long time. I've seen that word a bunch of times. I just never put the two and two together. So thank you, Lucinda, for sending that to me. Because it also got me when I was at the gym this morning, which is where I do a lot of my do a lot of my work, believe it or not. I don't get a lot of working out in. I'm always on my phone, like writing notes to myself, sending me emails. I got to thinking, we just got this little kitty cat. We got it on the 22nd. 
You better, seriously. This is like every single show, God is showing up and uh, just, or maybe not, or just every single show, there's a great coincidence. I don't really believe in uh, things happening by chance. Coincidence is when two things come together. So I think that there is order to it and because God orders things in this world and I'm a man of faith and I do pray. I say, oh Lord, show me things. And then boom, I get an idea. What if Cosmo is another name for Uranus, right? So I think Uranus and Cosmo, what if they're the same? I look it up, they're not, they're not. But you know what I do find out? Oh my goodness, this is out of control. Cosmo, that name Cosmo, is, uh, <laughs> this is uh, very significant. It's also in scripture. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, the world. Cosmos. Cosmos is the actual word for the world. The soul of man, the, the trident. Everything we've been talking about on the program. Very strange, but it gets stranger because I don't make these connections, right? I don't like go to, you know, we went out to lunch. We've been talking about getting a cat for a long time. I was raised with a cat. I love cats, big fan of cats. Um, we have the Dazers, right? But I haven't had a cat in a long time. Haven't had one in a long time since Oreo passed. And but we've been talking about it, talking about it, talking about it. So just two days ago, Dan, Dan, and I and Ethan were out to uh, we're out to lunch. We're having a little lunch together because we don't go away, right? Because who can go away today, <laughs> right? Everything's so expensive, and uh, so we go out to lunch and it's our little uh, vacation. And uh, I'm like, hey, why don't we go look at cats? And we go to the uh, animal shelter. And right when we walk in, we hear meow, meow, meow. We look over and this cat is freaking out, like just rubbing itself against the cage and and like brought our attention right to it. So of course, Dan, Dan, Ethan and I just fall in love with this cat, right? Cat was like missing hair, had bald patches everywhere, which I didn't think was significant at the time. But now, oh man. We've been talking about balding, right? We've been talking about balding from the Oscars, where everything that I broke down about the Oscars, about Will Smith smacking Chris Rock, picture of the Prince of Bel Air, you know, right? Smacking Christ, about the uh, Christ saying, you know, making a joke about baldness, baldness being, you know, the, the sin of humanity, about hair, you know, you should shave off your hair because you're so corrupt. And uh, here we have this beautiful cat, malnourished, right? Abandoned, was, it was a stray from uh, Puerto Rico. And uh, here it is here, bald, has uh, little patches. Quite a coincidence, but it gets weirder than that, if you can believe it, okay? The fact that Cosmo is the, uh, the literal meaning of the word world, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. So it's almost like we came in and we so loved the world that we took this balding, malnourished, abandoned kitty cat named Cosmo and we brought it home. Blackest night. This cat is, it's like, spook. Danielle was like, oh, I don't know. Is that like one of them cats that the, the witches have? I don't, is it bad luck? I didn't have a weird feeling about it. I don't get uh, I don't get hung up on that stuff. Not a big fan of crows though. Gotta be honest. I don't like when I see crows around.
So I start this whole thing looking at Cosmo and I think, okay, like these things start popping to mind as I'm kind of, you know, trying to figure this all out. These things start popping to mind for whatever reason. CERN pops into mind. Now, what's weird about CERN is that in my last program, I was going to talk about CERN. As you can see, this is printed up on the uh, Wednesday, the 20th. I had it printed up, ready to go, but I didn't talk about how they were about to fire up the collider again. On guess what day? The 22nd, April 22nd. Guess what day that was? Same day that we adopted the Cosmo. Eh, that's right. Same day. Weird, right? Not really. <laughs> Until you find out. That CERN, which, by the way, if you don't know who CERN is, CERN is like it's a nuclear physicist lab. It's a lab, okay? And um, I did a video about CERN, too, being, is it the Tower of Babel? And what I like to do is I like to take these things in the, the natural, and I like to somehow reveal what that really means. Spiritually speaking, so I'll use these literal things as a way to kind of teach a lesson. I did a video, a great video, about CERN and the Tower of Babel. Because you know what they're doing there is they're they're smashing these particles together and they're trying to find out the origins of life. They're trying to find out how all of this stuff came together. I think that's Cosmo. That is Cosmo. Cosmo all of a sudden is crying at my door. So CERN is kind of like, you know, kind of a spooky place. It, you know, they're opening portals and black holes and everything else. A lot of weird stuff connected to them. Actually, years ago, they did like some kind of mock ritual sacrifice type of a thing. logo looks like 666 so you know of course but once again we know 666 is symbolic of of carnal man right because god made man on the sixth day so of course and uh their mascot guess who it is it's shiva shiva the destroyer shiva the destroyer who's known for the trident <laughs> the trident which we've been talking about on the program gets weird right how is this connected to cosmo well they you know, blast off their uh, collider on the same day that I bring the Cosmo home, and they also launch their Cosmo 2022 showcase. I think it was in Brazil. Very strange. Very strange. Because people say, oh, they're opening up portals to other dimensions. They've actually said this. You know, they've actually said this. I don't know if you know this, but in quantum theory, there are like 11 dimensions. There's other dimensions. We're in like three dimensions. There's more. There's more. 
and they believe that they can tap into all that stuff, and that's why we have shows on Netflix like Stranger Things, where they open up, you know, the upside down, right? It's all spooky. So after my stunning revelation about Uranus being heaven, weird, right? You know, right? The kingdom of heaven? It's probably just another name. It's another name that we've come to know, and uh, that is within us. So the uh, kingdom of Uranus is within you. But after I start looking into this, I start looking into Cosmo, and I think to myself, my goodness gracious, how is this not something I knew? I didn't know this. What were the chances I go in and I get a cat that's balding, right? That's alopecia, right? I get a cat named Cosmo. Cosmo 2022 is going down. How is it that I get a cat named Cosmo? Because I look at this sick, there were a lot of other better looking cats. I gotta be honest. There was another cat right next to it, very beautiful, very cute, very, you know, couple of months younger. And I'm thinking, oh, we should take this one home. It's not as big of a loud mouth. It's not as kooky. It's not bumping around as much in the cage. Maybe we should take the calm one home. But for some reason, I just was drawn to that Cosmo like the prodigal son. Because that's what the story is, right? For God so loved the Cosmos that he gave his only begotten son that whoever believes in him shall have eternal life. This is why I wanted to present all this to you. Because what I got out of it was that, you know what? God hasn't abandoned us. God hasn't left us. Just as I would take this, you know, this, this uh, poor cat with the balding spots and everything and love it and try to nurse it back to health. That's what God's doing. That's what God's about to do. God hasn't forsaken us. Nor has he left us. This is written in scripture. Jesus was very clear. He said the things that we're going to do so much greater. It may not be easy. There may be some persecution. There may be some bad stuff. But no denying that all a person has to do is take a moment to look at their life, take a moment and look at the things that seem insignificant, and they will see that they are vastly underrating their circumstances. If I didn't look into Cosmo, and I didn't look into what went down, and I didn't look into that day, and I didn't look at, you know, even the fact that when I brought the uh, when I brought the the cat home, by the way, which everybody's hanging out and loving the cat. There's something about this cat, you know, something about the purring and the, all of that stuff. It's so beautiful, calms you down, brings everybody together, and we're just so happy. Cosmo's warming right up to everybody. Oh, don't you hold on. Mm. Okay, good job. Ethan did his beautiful video. I just thought it was so great. It was so strange to have the 21-year-old and the 18-year-old. The 20-year-old had Anthony had a test, so he couldn't come. But the but Noah and Shiloh and Ethan, we they all went. They all went to to uh, to uh, meet Cosmo and, and bring Cosmo home. And then when we were bringing Cosmo home, you know what happened? Noah and Shiloh were like, "You have to give it a green collar, a green collar." What? I think to myself, not at the time. At the time, I'm like, well, why is that? And they're like, well, Fairly Odd Parents. We all watch the Fairly Odd Parents. Is that the name of it? I don't even know. I don't even, I, I watched it with them. 
I, I took care of my... I was a single dad for a long time with just two kids until I met the Dan Dan and we came, became the blended family. There's this show, it's called The Fairly Odd Parents, and guess what? The lead character's name is Cosmo, and he's green. But, so I, of course, look into Cosmo, right? And I'm thinking, okay, green, right? We're talking about green. We got the green horse of the apocalypse, right? Someone just told me, I, I didn't look into this, but I saw a comment. I don't know who it is. I'm sorry. It only comes to mind right now. Someone said, the Gutfield show, he has a pale horse on his desk. The pale horse of the apocalypse, the green horse of the apocalypse. Right now we know with that, what's his name? With the Z, Zelen. He goes skiing. Is uh, his, That name means green. And he sits in the green chair and he wears the green shirts and everything's green, right? Even at the Oscars, we saw Jada Pinkett and she was, what was she wearing? Green. And it looked like a horse, <laughs> her, her dress. Remember this? So, of course, they're like, you have to give it a green collar. Pff, that's just mind-blowing. But you know what's even cooler? Is the uh, that, that show, Fairly Odd Parents? Fair, fair, fairy Odd Parents? I don't know. Okay, let me just read some stuff. The Occupation? Magic. Superhero. The Resonance? Listen to The Resonance, where the Fairly Odd Parents live. One, two, three, fish bowl lane. Fish bowl. Right now we're uh, Pisces, right? Fish. I'll make you fishers of men. Fish bowl in a fish bowl being studied. Not just that, but Dimsdale. They live in Dimsdale. Dim. The light is dim. It's a picture of carnality. It's very, very strange to me. Aliases for uh, this. This cartoon character is uh, Klefto, like a thief. And the enemies is Anti-Cosmo, Anti-Fairy. All of these things I just thought were so interesting. I just find it so strange that, of course, they, uh, they fire the uh, Collider up and they're known for their Cosmo 2022, which is going to be held in August, I guess, on the 22nd as well. Very interesting. Dark matter, neutrinos, astroparticle physics, all of this stuff. Very strange. Opening portals. And then I remember, as I'm writing all of these things to myself at the gym, I remember I saw a tweet this morning where they were talking about how it looked like uh, Shiva was revealed in a tube. And some people say that it's symbolic of, you know, a phallus, kind of like Shiva's birthed out of, you know, but really, it could be a portal. It's quite strange. All of these things tying together. Very interesting. So, the kingdom of Uranus is at hand. The kingdom of Uranus. Now all these things lining up and all these things coming together are so insane. But the, it's because I'm looking and I'm asking. Those who seek find. Just like that conjunction that took place that I talked about on the last program. A lot of people didn't catch on. I shared it in the video. You probably didn't catch on. The significance. The huge significance of the fact that what we see happening now happened exactly the last time that those two planets, Neptune and Jupiter, came together. The last time this happened, right? Catherine the Great invaded, took over a piece of property that wasn't, and then said, oh, it's now ours, and then lost that war, the war that went down, the Crimean War. On that day, the same time this happens, at the same time this conjunction takes place, many people are saying that Catherine the Great, for invading that territory and 
annexing that territory and becoming one with that territory is the reason that this is going down now. Nothing new under the sun. Don't you find that strange? Don't you find that strange that in April of 1856 that happens and then in April of 2022 it happens again and then the same story is playing out? Is anybody paying attention? I don't know. I'm paying attention. I think you're paying attention. But are you paying attention enough to look at your circumstance? Are you looking at the cat that she just adopted to find a greater message there? Are you looking at your circumstance? Are you asking God, teach me the truth no matter what the cost? Are you looking for more? Are you asking for more? Do you want to know the God of Jacob, the God of Isaac, the God of Abraham, the God of Jesus Christ who laid down his life? God so loved the world, cosmos, that he gave his only begotten son. Because now, it being an utmost priority to go and probe and look into Uranus, the kingdom of heaven, that that has to be done, that's a beautiful thing. That the world right now, that the, 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 the system that is in charge says, we need to go to Uranus. We need to figure out what's going on there because Uranus is heaven, the kingdom of heaven. And the kingdom of heaven, by the way, is hidden in the field. It's like a treasure that's hidden in the field. A couple of people pointed out, by the way, that I guess the tweet that Elon um, responded to, it didn't say it had to be done. I guess I didn't read it enough. I didn't really look at it because I thought it said it had to be done. And then I did a whole little bit that I thought was pretty funny. But everybody was telling me in the comments section, instead of it had to be done, Elon, who, by the way, I don't know if you notice, <laughs> you know the people, the, uh, the people, the, uh, it's like a forum, economics in the world. Can you put it all together? <laughs> you know how they have their, there are global leaders of the world. They're young global leaders, you know, like Macron and others. You know how they, uh, the, the Klaus Schwab, he came out and he told everybody the emperor, he comes in, he's like, we put people in different places all over and so that. You know how he did that? We've talked about it on, a, on the uh, show before. Well, guess what? Guess who else is one of them leaders, one of them young global leaders? Elon. How about them apples? So, uh, whew, I hope he's, uh, I hope he's not a bad dude. Because if he's taking over, I don't know if he's gonna be all about free speech now, is he? I don't know. If he has, if he's part of an agenda, I don't know.
instead of saying it ha had to be done, it had to been done, like past tense, like it's already been done. As a couple of people pointed that out, I think maybe it was just one of them little, you know, little slip ups, but that's besides the point. I think it's I think it's very strange that that uh, that you're uh, you're part of this group, this world group, Elon. What's that about? Come on now. <laughs> Everybody has a lot of faith in you, man. I don't know. I'm not saying that I do. I don't really have faith in the people in this world. I have faith in God. You know, you'll own nothing by 2030 and you'll be happy. <laughs> That's the people that you want in charge of Twitter? I don't know. I don't know. You tell me in the comments section. But I found a message in Cosmo. I found a message in the world. All that is in the world, the lust of the eyes, the lust of the flesh, and the pride of life. Just as I fell in love with that, that miserable, balding, black as night, raucous cat. So God loves us in our... Uh, and our mess, and our mistakes, and our shame. God is with us, and for us, and God is going to, God so loved us, so loved the world, that he gave Christ to us, so that Christ could rise again in our heart and deliver us from all this nonsense. So why don't we look for more? Because the kingdom of heaven, the kingdom of Uranus, is a mystery and you got to seek it out. The knowledge of the secrets of the kingdom of Uranus have been given to you, but not to all those who don't know. Whoever has been given more and they will have an abundance. Who does not, even them which they have will be taken away from them. So this is why I speak to them in parable, Jesus said, that those that are not part of this kingdom this kingdom of God, this kingdom of heaven, this kingdom of Uranus. Though they see, they will not see. Though they hear, they will not hear or understand. In them is fulfilled the prophecy of Isaiah. This is talking about the wicked people in the world. You will be ever hearing but never understanding, ever seeing but never perceiving. Because this people's heart has become calloused. They hardly hear with their ears, and they've closed their eyes. Otherwise, they might see with their eyes how awesome it is. And what I'm trying to say, are you opening your eyes to the things around you and asking God, what are you trying to say? So what I did. That's all I did. Is there more? Why did I get this cat? What does this cat mean? It's very strange, right? But it's very beautiful kingdom of heaven is like a treasure hidden in a field. When a man finds it, he hides it again. And then in his joy, he goes and he souls, he sells everything he has, and he buys the whole field. It's not just about the good stuff. The kingdom of heaven is, is hidden in the field, by the field. Thank God for the life that you have. Take it for the good and the bad. Because heaven, Uranus, is right there in between. I love each and every one of you. This is a mind-blowing show to me. I hope it's a mind-blowing offering to you. It's very strange. My mug actually has heaven written right there. So, you know, get yourself a, get yourself a mug in the description at my, uh, at my store. At Jacob, and get yourself a copy of The uh, Calling. I'm going to finish the show by playing my trailer. It's like kind of a concept, like I hope one day, I believe one day it'll be a movie. So this is what I put together to kind of you know, show you what I think the trailer of my novel, The Calling, could be. If you want a copy of it, the uh, links are in the description below. It's on sale everywhere books sold. Thank you for being here. Thank you for sharing. Thank you for liking. Thank you for doing all you do. God bless you. Have the best day ever, and I'll talk to you soon. Bye-bye. September 10th, Mars hangs closer to the Earth than it has in 6,000 years. 
like the light that led men from the east to a child in a manger, it could well be a sign of good things to come. Thomas James shall be his name. The world will change because of him. In the small town of Bethel, in a time not unlike our own, a child with a great purpose is born. Years later, alienated by his peers and abused, Thomas suffers a devastating loss. When it appears he has nothing left to live for in the world, this is when his true calling begins. While trying to escape the sinister powers that be, a terrifying vision haunts him. Miraculous events seem to follow the peculiar young man as he struggles to come to terms with what he was born to do. The stage is set. The time is at hand. The truth will rise and a revolution will begin. The startling revelation of who Thomas James is, truly, will change the lives of those around him and set off a chain of events long ago foretold. There is more to this novel than one might think. Inside these pages hides a treasure just waiting to be discovered. So if you've ever wondered if there's more to life, or why it is we suffer, then this story will not only captivate you, it may just open your eyes to a truth that could set you free. Find out what is in us all that makes us heed the calling. Click it.